Hey everybody, this is Dan. May 12th, 2012, day before Mother's Day. And uh, I've been having a lot on my mind, so I'm gonna make a few videos today. My wife and daughter are gone, and uh, it's inclement weather, it's raining down here, so uh, I don't have to work today. So that's a good thing. But uh, I wanna touch on a couple of things real quick in this video. And uh, you know, I love to read comments on YouTube and uh, one of the guys that I really follow a lot is uh, Jero24 or Brother JT that's my partner and I uh, want to give a shout out to him and another guy that I've been following for a long time don't always agree with everything he says because some sometimes we're at odds on things but he is very knowledgeable so you need to check this guy out and that's T-Mot, T-M-O-T. I'm, and I'm going to leave a video link to one of his videos. And um, it's not that I agree with him or disagree with him all the time. It's just uh, some things he sees one way and I see another way. Which, which is fine. I have nothing but respect for him. But he makes great videos. But anyway, um, this video is uh, about a comment I've seen several times on the internet. And it's about President Obama's second term you know um, the popular mode of thinking is the reason why he didn't reach out to black people or the reason why he didn't address the black agenda like every other president from George Washington to Bill Clinton to George Bush Jr. had to was because you know he can do it his second term because he didn't want to be too black, you know, like black people are not a part of America, but that's neither here nor there, another video. But that seems to be the popular mode of thinking. You know, uh, there's a reason why he can't be black. There's a reason why he can't uh, 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 focus on our problems. There's a reason why he can't address black people as a nation within a nation because he just can't do that in his first term. He does not have the flexibility to do that in his first term. But I don't agree with that. I, why does he not have to address the black agenda in America? Now, first of all, it shouldn't even be a black agenda in America because we're all Americans. But be that as it may, and the fact there has to be a black agenda because we know that it has not been a level playing field since we were freed allegedly from slavery in 1864 during the Emancipation Proclamation that President Abraham Lincoln really didn't want to sign. So there is an inherent need to have a black agenda in America because we face overwhelmingly negative forces every day as so-called citizens in this land. Now, you do have a lot of people that go around here beating around the bush about the Constitution or Obama's lack of uh, acknowledging the Constitution and, you know, everybody's talking about Constitution, 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 Constitution. Now, that was a little tongue twisting. But this is the same Constitution that was written by the Founding Fathers that didn't even think black men were equal. That didn't even think we were Humans, basically. Three-fifths of a man. And that has not been addressed. There has not been an amendment yet saying that that was wrong. Their line of thinking was wrong because basically if you're a constitutionalist, you think in a certain mindset, an idea, a theory. You know, uh, that's what basically you think in. That's your mode of thinking. An idealist. This is what the Constitution represented. This is the way we're supposed to live. Well, if the people that wrote the Constitution didn't even think that I was a real man or thought I was three-fifths of a man, how can that Constitution be for me? That's the reason why there is an inherent need for a black agenda. See, many of these things were not ever meant for us as black free people anyway. You have to understand, in 1776, come on. That's over a hundred years before we were even titled or labeled as free. 
And we know we didn't get real freedom. Well, we still don't have real freedom, but we didn't get any semblance of freedom until we had a voice to vote. And that didn't come around to the 1960s Voting Rights Act. So if people that are entrenched in the land that don't, that don't even have a say in the political landscape of the land really are not free. And even right today, you have laws or that are going on the books, uh, proclamations that are going on the books, legislation that are going on the books that basically strips the rights of black people in America to vote even today. And we know who the most disenfranchised people are. But getting back to the point, second term. Now let's address some of the things that he addressed or met in the first term with certain groups. You see, I have to, I'm of the frame of mind of thinking that if you don't meet with a person and demand of them what you expect of them before you give them your vote, they'll ignore you. That's something that the black populace did not do. And we're to blame. I'm to blame. I voted for Obama, but I trusted the wrong people to speak for me once he got in office. I trusted him to do the right thing, but what did he do as soon as he got in office? He's around himself by people that do not have our best interests at heart at all. And what did he do? He watched out for every other group. And I'm going to say during his first term because that basically in theory is over with. Six months down the road, we'll have the uh, re-elections, you know, his re-election bill start and all this stuff. Mitt Romney might get it. Ron Paul might get it. Who knows? So he may not be a second term president. But before I get to what he did in his first term, let me tell you the drawbacks of not having Obama in the second term. Let's say, for instance, Mitt Romney becomes the president. Now, I happen to support Ron Paul because he is anti-war. I'm down with anybody that's anti-war. I don't agree with all the things that Ron Paul says because I know that he will still have the same senators and the same congresspeople at the highest levels of government. So, let's not be, let's not go and have illusions of grandeur of what Ron Paul can really do. But he can end wars as a commander-in-chief. That's the reason why I voted for President Barack Obama. So anybody who's anti-war, I'm all with that. But let's just say President Barack Obama is not re-elected and Mitt Romney gets into the White House. Okay. What do you think he should say to the black agenda then? Let's have an honest conversation now. You know what I would tell you if I was the next president and you came to me talking about a black black agenda now remind now let me remind you that all the eight years that george bush jr was in office all black people did was cry complain cry complain cry complain about the conditions of the black people a black man gets in there a so-called black man gets in there and we don't say nothing we get nothing he addresses us never Unless putting Al Sharpton in front of you that continues to sell you out anyway is something, form of appeasement or whatever, I don't really think that. Okay, but what should the next president of the United States say when you come to him with a black agenda? You know what I would tell you? Get the hell out of my face. Because when you had a black man in there, you didn't ask nothing of him. You asked absolutely nothing. We have demanded absolutely nothing like all the other groups have. Of Barack Obama. So if I'm the next president, why the hell should I address any of your grievances? We know that black Americans have grievances in this land. Anytime you got two million black folks, people of color in prison, anytime you have black men wrongfully executed in Georgia, anytime you have an additional 3 million black people on the roads of the Department of Corrections in this land, that is a grievance alone. Anytime you have black people leaving the floor foreclosure per capita of the uh, ethnic makeup of this country, anytime we are disproportionately unemployed, anytime we lead every category in a negative aspect in this country for our population, which is 
between 14 and 15 percent of this country anytime we are the leaders in everything negative there is a grievance within the black population but we let him slide because it's his first term but let me tell you something it may not be a second term so like my mom always told me those who have not ask not so that's just something to chew on and I don't want to hear this well he didn't do anything for anybody else open your eyes and read open your eyes and read I won't even I won't even go into it about what he's done for everybody else I won't even go into it only thing I tell you is open your eyes and read research check but for you naysayers I will leave a link down there because I know it's gonna be some black apologist on my page trolling me saying that I'm wrong about Barack Obama but hey he did do something for us he, you know what this video I'm so sorry let me apologize for all you Obama supporters he did do something for black people he did sing Al Green let's stay together he did do that damn I was wrong all the time you can't make this up man he did give us Al Green thank you thank you Barack Obama